research and innovation actions, which are funded by uh, the 2.0 partnership. Um, you don't see them yet, but they are here with me. We have six speakers. Um, they, are going, they are going to tell us about their projects, um, and I'm going to introduce them uh, one by one as we go along with the, with the session. And then uh, we have also here with us uh, Mr. Bain, Tilo. Uh, so he is from Fraunhofer. He is also one of the vice chairmen of uh, the executive board of the 2.0 partnership. And he will help us um, understanding what are the achievements which are, has been uh, done so far in this area related to materials, lightweighted, lightweighting for the automotive industry. And he will also um, share with us his thoughts uh, with respect to what remain to be done in this domain. So the uh, six projects that are going to be presented are uh, Fatigue for Light, Alma, Revolution, Levis, and Flamingo. So these are uh, all ongoing projects. So they started in uh, the beginning of 2021, and they will end up in about one year, apart from Flamingo, which is a little, a little bit longer, and it will finish in uh, 2025. Um, they are all working on the same thing. They are all working on uh, lighter materials compared to the, the solutions that already exist on the market. And of course, the reason is for uh, improving the, uh, the efficiency of the vehicles, improving the range, and we know how this is important for uh, electric vehicles. Um, so the project are going to talk about the components, the parts of the vehicle that they are working on. They will present um, the materials the, uh, that they are using or that they are developing. And the time is uh, available is not that much, but they will also explain um, how the solutions that they are developing are technically sound, economically sustainable, uh, and also, um, so, e sorry, economica economically viable and sustainable. Um, and then we are supposed to have an, a six project presented upscale, but I don't see the speaker here. Okay, so the, uh, the, there should be also a six project presented upscale. This is a project that finished last year um, and it's slightly different. So there is about digitalization and in particular is about the use of arti artificial intelligence and the application of artificial intelligence for, uh, um, with respect to the production processes. And in this case is to reduce the time which is necessary to develop new complex uh, electric, uh, electrified platforms. So this is, in a nutshell, the, the content of the presentation for today. If you have questions, and I really hope that you will have, um, there will be a microphone going around. So we're going to allow some time at the end of each presentation. Uh, so depending also on how we progress, but okay, there will be time for the presentation. Then at the very end, there will be the final discussion that will be moderated by uh, Mr. Bain, and we, we can take, hopefully, some questions also, also at that time. Okay, so without any further ado, I propose that we, we start with the first speaker. So the, the first speaker is Mr. Jimenez, Sergio. He is the coordinator of Project Fatigue for Light. He is a researcher at Simne and works also as an associate lecturer in structural analysis in mechanics at UPC in Spain. So if you are ready, Mr. Jimenez, the floor is yours. Uh, is it working? It will work, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. Okay, and you said that I should be clicking this. Mm. Yeah. No, everything works, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric, for your kind presentation. Um, as Eric already told you, I'm Sergio Jimenez. I'm the coordinator of the Fatigue for Life project. And uh, the main aim that I have for today's presentation is to introduce you uh, this project and show you, share with you some of the results that we've already obtained on the, on the project. 
Uh, in order to do so, I prepared this presentation here, following this structure, uh, in which I will be first uh, presenting you basics of the Fatigue for Light uh, project. Then uh, I will also introduce you the consortium that is working on the project and which are the main objectives that we're trying to uh, successfully uh, fulfill along the project. Then I will move towards the presentation of uh, this section, which is called project status, in which I will introduce you the work that we've been doing all along the, this period of time since we uh, start the project. And then finally, I will introduce some of the expected impacts coming from the uh, consecution of the Fatigue for Light project. Okay, um, this project is an H2020 project um, funded under the topic of advanced light materials and their production processes for automotive applications. Uh, as already Eric mentioned, this is a three year uh, project and we are now initiating our last year in the project and it's being coordinated by the research group from Barcelona CIMNE. Uh, a total of 13 partners is, is working on the on the project coming from Spain, France, Italy, and Sweden. And you can see here, which is the division between uh, research institutions, universities, industrial companies, and standardization bodies that are working on the project uh, right now. Um, here, I have summarized the main objectives that we are pursuing in the Fatigue for Light, but uh, rather uh, than explaining them by myself, I prefer you to I prefer to share with you this uh, video that we've um, prepared on the Fatigue for Light for dissemination purposes. Did you know that the chassis of an electric vehicle accounts for 50% of its weight? What if we could reduce the weight and thus increase the vehicle range while contributing to a more sustainable mobility? Lightweight materials have been around for some time with great potential in reducing the vehicle's weight without compromising safety. However, they introduce significant challenges related to part design and performance. It's working on the lab. Select the optimal materials for lighter vehicle chassis and reduce the testing time for new materials. Based on eco the fatigue Maybe it's not a good option. <laughs> Mental methodologies to select the optimal materials for lighter vehicle chassis and reduce the testing time for new materials. Based on eco design and circular economy values, Fatigue for Light aims to boost the use of lightweight materials adapted to the chassis parts of electric vehicles, enhancing weight reduction while increasing vehicle safety. As one of the Light takes a step to make advancements in building a zero emission future while simultaneously minimizing production losses and meeting the industry needs. To find out more about the Fatigue for Light project, visit our website www.fatigueforlight.eu or follow us on social media. Okay, anyway, um, basically the main idea is to achieve a weight reduction at the vehicle, at the electric vehicle level. Uh, and we pretend to achieve this result by using new materials and also by developing new numerical technologies and new uh, tests, uh, experimental tests. This is the main idea of the, of the project. If you want to see the complete video, you can visit our YouTube page and you will find it there. Or even in our web page, you will find the link to, to the video. Okay. Then, now that you have more or less an idea of which are the objectives of the project and we, what, are, what are we pretending to do on the project, uh, and uh, before showing you which are the results that we've been obtaining all along the project, um, let me just share with you which is the approach that we've been following uh, along the project. The Fatigue for Light is a three-step project in which we, first of all, focus on the study of the materials that we will be using to achieve our ob objectives. So we work at the following a material perspective and we focus all the efforts on characterizing 
the properties of those materials. Then, once we've done that, we move towards including now the manufacturing effects uh, that would appear for sure on the final uh, pieces of the vehicle. And in order to do so, we move towards this lab demonstrator perspective. And uh, we there sim well, simulate and, and uh, perform some experimental tests on these, let's say, more advanced samples, uh, which in include the information obtained previously, but now we add these uh, new challenges coming from the manufacturing processes, uh, streaming, uh, punching, and uh, forming, for example. And then once we got all this knowledge, we apply it uh, in order to verify that we can achieve our objectives uh, by applying all these techniques and this knowledge on these final components, uh, specimens. This is a, just one example. And uh, by checking that we are fulfilling our objectives on these specimens here, on these components, we then scale the results to the chassis level. And all this work, uh, we perform, we do all this work following three research lines. We follow a life cycle assessment perspective. We also do experimental work and also we dedicate some efforts for numerical modeling. And the results that I will be presenting are coming from the work done for each of these three research lines. Um, so regarding the life cycle assessment, uh, basically what we've done here is defining an eco-design eco uh, approach that we used uh, as a decision maker to, selection the, to select the materials to be used and also to define the design uh, of the chassis parts. And uh, from this uh, study, we finally end up by selecting these materials here, uh, which mainly are high strength uh, steels, manganese steels, uh, stainless steels, stainless steel, yeah, uh, aluminum solutions, and also hybrid solutions, including GFRP and aluminum. And uh, we also decided at this step, uh, which were these um, geometries, these components that will be studied on this last part of the project, which are these uh, low control arm, this shocking tower, uh, this beam here, and these wheels. Now, moving towards the experimental work, uh, I've only included here two of the main outcomes of the project, which are uh, related with this, this work here, which is bas basically uh, the definition or the uh, proposal of new uh, experiments, new rapid fatigue tests, and we've, we've uh, used them to characterize our materials and we validate them comparing with the conventional techniques. And uh, we finally conclude uh, that we have achieved a really significant reduction uh, in time that uh, for sure will be really interesting for, for industry. And I'm also including here the big amount of work that uh, of effort that we've dedicated uh, to the um, study of these uh, manufacturing effects on the on the, the the effects that these manufacturing processes have on the materials that we are studying and sorry and we here have studied punching trimming forming and welding okay and we've seen which is the effect over the fatigue um, over the fatigue uh, response of the materials that we are studying. Uh, and uh, finally here, what I'm presenting is the work that we've done uh, with respect to numerical modeling. Um, on the Fatigue for Light project, basically what we've done is proposing a new uh, numerical methodology to study these fatigue processes. And uh, what I've included in this image is a brief summary of the steps that we've been following up to now uh, in order to um, first generate the methodology and then apply it and also improve it if necessary. 
Uh, so the first thing that we've done is a uh, comparison with respect to the available uh, widely used commercial techniques for the study of fatigue processes. Then uh, we apply this methodology on the study of advanced fatigue failures, including load sequence effect, residual strength analysis, and overload phenomenon. And uh, right now we are finishing um, an extension of this methodology uh, of this methodology in order to include these uh, manufacturing effects that we also studied experimentally and I uh, commented previously. Here you can see uh, just two examples of one part of the uh, punching punching um, modeling and also of the forming uh, modeling process. Okay. And uh, before going to this um, section of the impacts, I would like to comment some of the direct uh, outcomes, which are which ca which can be quantified, uh, that have already uh, come from the Fatigue for Life project in terms of participation in Congress ses sessions. Uh, published papers. We've already published four peer review, um, uh, four papers in peer, peer review uh, journals. We've also worked on preparing dissemination material in terms of a website, the video that you've seen, uh, working on social media and flyer. Uh, I have the flyers there and if you want you can ask me uh, for one or I can distribute it now. And we are also uh, currently working on the standardization process of the experimental techniques that uh, I previously mentioned. And I also wanted to mention here our participation in this electric vehicles uh, cluster that we used mainly to, um, to share in a more effective way with the whole community all the results and all the knowledge that we are obtaining from this set of uh, sister projects that Eric, uh, well, that, that uh, are presenting today on this session. And basically, uh, up to now, what we've been doing is participating in joint, joint seminars and uh, co congresses sessions. And uh, just to finish now, I would like to briefly talk about the impacts that uh, should be expected from the Fatigue for Life project, which should be, of course, related with the um, work that we are doing that, that I've already presented to you, uh, related with the use of new materials and the smart design that I, I let's say, mentioned, but not uh, presented in really uh, depth. Uh, we should expect uh, the weight reduction, which is the objective, the main objective of the, of the project. Also, uh, considering the use of these numerical techniques and the new experiment, experimental tools proposed from the project, we should expect an increase of efficiency in vehicle development. development. Uh, I've already mentioned, as I've already mentioned, uh, we've been working on the fatigue assessment and uh, we have a, 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 a work package dedicated to censoring. And from this uh, work, we expect to assess the structural integrity procedures and efficient repair reuse techniques. And uh, finally, related with the with the eco-design perspective that we're following in the Fatigue for Life project, we uh, will finally uh, be able to generate an effective solution for reuse, recycling, and recovery of material. Uh, my last slide now is the connection of these impacts with the European policy objectives. And uh, this allows me to conclude that the Fatigue for Life project will contribute <coughs> to generate a more competitive, smarter, greener, a connected and sustainable Europe. Uh, thank you very much, and I will be glad to answer all your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Imanets. Are there any questions from, from the audience or from you, Thiel? Do you have any questions? Just waiting for the audience. Yeah. If not, I have two questions. Okay. One is a scientific one. Uh, the acceleration of the 
obtaining the SN curve, the Stratus train rail. Is it similar to the incremental step test? What? Mm, not sure. We have published papers for these methodologies, so maybe you can check that. This work has been conducted by Eureka. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I was saying that uh, I'm not sure about the frequencies that they use here. We have published papers for these methodologies, so you can check uh, there which are the, the frequencies that they used. But uh, in fact, here, as far as I know, it's not that, I mean, for the, for the thermal control, yes, for sure, it is, it is important, the frequency. But uh, what they expect there is to reach this um, stable condition here in which the, uh, the, the, the temperature is not evolving. Okay, in which you reach this steady state there. But here you are not checking the, the, the temperature, you are just checking the evolution of the strength of the material. And I'm not that sure that they uh, pretend to go on a really high uh, frequencies there. Okay, I will check with the back. Uh, the second question related to the end of life strategies. You, you mentioned that you have uh, recycling concepts and end of life concepts. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Okay, I'm not the expert on that. <laughs> Eurekat is working on that and also RISE is working on that. Again, we have this deliverable, which is public and available on the, on the website. Uh, as far as I know, what we've been developing is the guidance that we should be following. And uh, now uh, we've shared, well now, at the very beginning, and now we are ensuring that all the uh, industrial partners which are involved in, the, in building these components here are following this uh, guidance, but I'm not really sure of which are the specific points that we are following there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hello, my name is Horst Flügel from ADL. Um, <coughs> you mentioned at the beginning that 50% uh, of the car's weight is the chassis. Mm -hmm. I recently saw a video from uh, Tesla, the pickup truck actually with stainless steel, you might know that? Not sure. Okay, so the, the concept there is to use stainless steel, okay. and special forming techniques, avoid uh, painting because it's not necessary, mm -hmm. um, having already the, the structure stiffness of the, of the chassis. I don't know if you're all aware of that concept, uh, but what about such concepts? use stainless steel for the chassis? It's, I mean, we are, we are studying also this stainless steel here, and uh, we are shifting for some of these components towards the use of this stainless steel. Uh, as far as I know, I'm not sure if this uh, can be directly applied to big pieces, because here what we are doing is just working at the component level, and we are shifting uh, <laughs> between materials which are more or less, res uh, which resemble uh, in terms of uh, strength um, properties and also fatigue properties. And even they, uh, we achieve um, better, better um, responses from those materials. Um, but we are not considering only using this stainless steel solution. We are considering other options too. One more. <laughs> 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 you you have my email at the well and here so if you have more questions because i will be leaving more or less by the uh, on the third presentation so if you have more questions you can send me also an email there okay innovation and previously at uh, i know that for sure because i was in charge uh, the adoption by project of lightweight solution is on basis of cost. Okay. You have a cost threshold for a kilo earn. I haven't seen any indication about cost, unless I am mistaken. Yeah, I mean, even the weight, all, all we've done, I mean, all the predictions in terms of real weight savings and the corresponding economic savings, will be done on this final part. All we've done up to now is a provision uh, at the very beginning of the project in which we estimate the weight being, uh, 
that that we can reduce at the at the chassis level. But uh, I'm not. I can find out which is the the cost value that that we are managing, and I can share it with you for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jimenez, for uh, for the presentation. Uh, in any case, is actually maybe uh, as I said. Uh, cost is certainly is part of the project. So uh, today I agree there was uh, nothing that was shown on uh, on this level, but it's something which is considered, and um, it should come. Mm -hmm. Is already there are they, there are already things which has been done uh, as part of the project, the level which are available. So the time is uh, we we are on a time uh, constraint. So this was not presented, but. Maybe if you can discuss later on with uh, Mr. Jimenez. Uh, so we're going to move to the, uh, the second presentation. Uh, so this is about Project ALMA. So uh, Ms. Ledo Raquel is the speaker. She's head of materials innovation at CTAG, which is the Automotive Technology Center of Galicia in Spain. So if you are ready, Ms. Ledo, the, uh, the floor is now yours. Okay, thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you very much for your attendance. Sorry, <laughs> because I moved. Thank you for your attendance, and, and thank you for this opportunity to talk about ALMA. ALMA is a consortium of nine partners from four countries. We have uh, five market-oriented uh, uh, companies, three big ones, uh, ArcelorMittal, Ford, and BATS, two SMEs, uh, Rescol and Innerspec, three RTOs, CTAG, where I work, uh, Frank Hofer and TNO, and one international association. We have around four millions of budget, and we started this project in February 2021. So that means that we have just started the, uh, the last, we have three, three years of duration, so we have just started the last year of the, of the project. So at this point, let me share with you uh, one reflection. Here we have a photo of a pregnant woman. When a woman is pregnant, uh, she has a very big challenge, a very big objective during nine months. And this, this objective is to guarantee the safety of the baby. This is the, the, the main challenge. Uh, so there are another objectives. Maybe we can talk about uh, avoid to, to gain weight because it's not good for the woman and not good for the baby. But the big challenge is to maintain the protection of this baby. When we talk about cars, it's exactly the same. Our first challenge, our first goal is to guarantee the safety of the occupants. So ALMA is about lightweight, of course, but we can't forget what is the main point, and the main point is to guarantee the safety of the passengers. If we talk about electric vehicles, we have two types of passengers. We have people, but we have another little passenger that is the battery. So we have two types of baby, and we have to protect both of them. So I always uh, would like to, to mention this because it's something that is really important. But I take before, ALMA is about lightweighting. So the first, if we talk about a specific objectives, we can talk about uh, reduce the weight of the vehicle uh, structure. In this case, we are focused in the body structure, in the body in white. Uh, we are talking about incorporating new eco-design strategies because we have to think in meeting the requirements, but also we have to think in what is going when we arrive at the end of the life. So from the first beginning, we have to think about this. At the end, the global objective is to decrease the environmental impact of electric vehicles in the, in, at global level. And of course, one people uh, was talking about this, we are in the automotive sector. So all the technologies, all the solutions we are uh, presenting should be affordable. For us, the cost and the safety are the two main points. So this is our approach, but I'm going point by point. First place, first step. Our starting point was uh, taking the Formondeo. The Formondeo uh, for a, 
standard vehicle, I mean an internal combustion engine vehicle. So the first point was to translate this structure to an ele electric structure. When we obtain this electric structure, we start to redesign. So CTAG, my company, uh, work in this point about redesigning all the structure. And there are three main points. The first one is the best material for the best location. Um, we have to know if we need more rigidity, if we need uh, more energy absorption. So it's really important, the best material in the best location. Then if we can integrate functions, we should do. I mean, we are going to, talk to, um, to, to work with new innovative materials. And in some cases, we will be allowed to integrate one, two, three, four parts in one only part. So this is important <coughs> also. And I mentioned before, we are designing, we are redesigning this structure for meeting the requirements, but also thinking in the future, also thinking in the end of the life, also thinking in the recyclability. So uh, I repeat, CETAC uh, was uh, in charge of the, the redesign of the structure, and our colleagues from TNO has developed a uh, tool, a BEPSIM tool, that uh, carry out with the LCI and LCC. Uh, also, costs are important for us. If we talk about innovative materials, in this case, in ALMA, we are uh, working with two types of materials. Steels, high-performance steels, of course, and SMC, uh, shield, uh, shield uh, <coughs> material compounds, and uh, in both cases, uh, devoted to lightweight, of course. In the case of uh, steel, ArcelorMittal is responsible for that. We are working with three new steels. One is a sandwich of steel and plastic. The other is a low-density steel. And the last one is a high-performance steel, an HSS steel. So uh, this allows us to decrease the thickness of uh, some pieces, some parts, and the other uh, important point is the possibility to integrate functions, as I mentioned before. Uh, in this point, we have changed 165 parts in a steel. And the other material, SMC, is based in uh, resin with a uh, random glass fiber. And we are just working uh, with uh, some textiles, some uh, glass fiber textile, <coughs> to increase the, the, the rigidity of some parts. And uh, our goal is to develop the battery cover and the dash panel. Well, uh, new innovative materials, new design, but we have to be sure that we are meeting the requirements of the car. So our colleagues from Ford has carried out all the tests and all the simulations needed to be sure that the, all the crash behavior is, is right and we are meeting these requirements. And our colleagues from Fraunhofer has work, has carried out the activities related to the uh, modeling and the obtain the, the yes the, the preparation of the material cars of these new materials. And uh, finally, in parallel, uh, the SMEs, Rescol and uh, Innerspec, has worked in two different technologies. One is related with the adhesive. Uh, Rescol has developed a um, debondable adhesive that is activated by temperature. That means that uh, with this adhesive, we are able to join steel and SMC materials. And at the end of the life, we apply high temperature. High temperature means 250 degrees, more or less. And we are able to easily disassemble the parts. And in the case of health monitoring, it's a technology based on ultrasounds that allow us to identify the status of the component. So when we reach this end of life, we are able to decide if the component is right or not, and we can reuse or not. So this is the work we have carried out during these two years. In the last year, we have to finish some uh, technical tasks. We are going to focus also in the uh, in the manufacturing of some parts to be sure that the technical feasibility is possible 
and to be sure that uh, all, the, um, all the results we have obtained at simulation level are right. So we are going to develop uh, two or three dem demonstrators, one or two in, in steel and the other in SMC. But uh, we, this last year, we, we, we will be always focused on uh, sharing the results and to communicate the results. Uh, my colleague Sergio has talked about uh, before, we have a cluster and light clusters where uh, Levis, Flamingo, Revolution, Fatih for Life and ALMA uh, are collaborating and what I, our idea is during this last year to promote more activities, more uh, collaborative activities to communicate properly our projects. And all this is, uh, is with the support of the Horizon Buster. And uh, if we talk about the important and the more important is what is the impact of our project. So I would like to highlight uh, three points. The first one is, I, I mentioned before, the BEPSIN tool. The BEPSIN tool is a tool that is available in, at our website and uh, allow us, allow to the designers to identify in an easy way uh, what is the, the best solution, the best material and the best design for a component uh, in terms of LCA and LCC. One question that we receive uh, usually is what is the difference or what is the, uh, yes, what is the difference between BEPSYNC and other tools, CIMA Pro, Gabi, etc. And the answer is, is easy. Um, BEPSYN is not supposed, you don't suppose to be an expert in LCA and LCC. It's not needed. BEPSYN is focused on designers. So it's an easy, easy way, easy, it's, it's very, really easy to use it and to have uh, the first uh, results to decide what is better or not. The second, point, the second point, pardon, is about material cars. Our colleagues from Fraunhofer has developed a new methodology to develop these material cars for new materials. And they are able to reduce the test they need about 50%. So that means that the, for new cars, for new project cars, we are going to reduce the time and obviously the, the money we need. And the last point is about the innovative materials. These innovative materials allow us to decrease, decrease the thickness of the parts and to integrate. I repeat once again, it's really, really important to integrate different components. So we will be uh, less manufacturing tools, less time of uh, production, etc. So all this translate in this point. We have reached a light weighting about 23% concerning the, the base of, of ALMA. Um, the big companies in, in this project, uh, Ford and ArcelorMittal, are now uh, planning the, the launch of the new products, the launch of these new steels, and the launch of new electric vehicles. Ford estimates that uh, around 2 million electric vehicles will be produced by 2026, and represents more or less half of global volume by uh, 2030. And the results we are obtaining here in ALMA will be present in these new um, cars. So I have now- With the state of our planet's climate and fuel prices spiraling upwards, it's crucial to make electric vehicles more competitive against gasoline and diesel options. Range is still a key issue for battery vehicles, with long charge times and sparse recharging stations complicating the matter. With bigger batteries out of the question, lighter vehicles are the solution. The ALMA project is a multidisciplinary group of nine partners from across Europe, all united under the same objective, to make electric cars more lightweight, efficient and sustainable through an eco-design approach that uses new advanced materials. The project will improve the sustainability of vehicles by addressing each of the circular strategies. Performance on the road will be improved through innovative lightweight materials, thereby enhancing range and reducing energy consumption. Lifespan of the vehicles will be increased through health monitoring with sensors that detect damage and parts in need of maintenance before a critical failure. 
End-of-life scenarios will be optimized by ensuring recyclability of materials and debondable adhesives that can be activated to allow easy disassembly. The consortium has already achieved a 23% weight reduction compared to the baseline, reducing total weight by 200 kilos. This saves 240 kilowatt hours of energy and 84 euros due to lower consumption on a yearly basis. The vehicle's range is expected to increase up to 6%. To help achieve these results, the Armour project has developed BevSim, a lifecycle analysis tool for battery electric vehicles. Many ideas and materials can be tested much faster in simulations, saving a lot of time and money. Armour, revolutionizing the automotive and transportation sectors through eco-design principles. So it's all from my part. Thank you very much to the Commission by funding uh, this project, obviously, and thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Ledo. So we have uh, five minutes for questions. There. Yes. I can speak louder. No. <laughs> <laughs> As yesterday, we have online yeah. <laughs> participants. This is for the previous uh, presentation, for this presentation, and for the next the three presentations, okay. and in their title, Lightweight, Lightweight. So, in 2020, Tesla started uh, gigacasting, and uh, they are introducing 10 to 15 percent higher weight mm -hmm. than conventional steel making, and they are disrupting completely the automotive world, okay? That's the point. And they are also disrupting the steel makers. Okay. Ten to fifteen percent higher weight. Okay. Weight is not the issue for Tesla, unless you consider Tesla a secondary player in electromobility. For them, speed is everything. Investment, your initial investment is the main issue for all OEM today. But speed of production. For most models that they develop, Tesla, it's uh, 10 hours from the beginning to the end. The equivalent in Germany is 30 hours. Speed is everything. Speed is everything for automotive. And you are right. You said that uh, uh, to respond to these Italian technologies adopted by Tesla, ArcelorMittal, you are right, are addressing new technology in steel, and they made recently an, an agreement with another Italian technology mm -hmm. using only steel, avoiding and prohibiting aluminum in cars. Mm -hmm. Please go on the Absolor website and you will see who is this company. Mm -hmm. Talk with your colleagues in Absolor Metal. Okay. The steel is the answer. But uh, to properly answer, you need to change completely the way a car is made. It has to be born electric as a certain Pietro Perlo introduced in 2010, um, a, a contest that was later on copied by BMW uh, later on. It has to be born in a completely different way. That's why ArcelorMittal now is returning to, to steel to respond to gigacasting. Okay. Thank you. If you have comment on, on this, so li lightweight is not an issue for these people. And they make very safe car with the highest ranking in crash test. I don't know if my colleagues uh, want to, to add uh, something. And uh, I only have to say that I agree partially with you. I agree uh, partially because uh, lightweight is not the key point, it's, it's true. Because if we are, if we are able to introduce uh, better batteries, lightweight is not a problem. If we are able to have a bigger range with uh, new batteries, new solid state batteries or other batteries, uh, lightweight is clear that it's not, uh, it's not a problem. But in any case, we are introducing new things in the car every day. So we have to be careful with this because at the end, in electric vehicles, the weight is not so crucial. It, it's only a question of range, I repeat. But in any case, we have to be more careful with, with this. And I agree partially because uh, I agree that uh, uh, still uh, will continue to be a, a good solution. So, as I mentioned in Alma, we are not we are not working 
with um, uh, aluminium, we are not working with uh, uh, carbon fiber, we are not working with these materials. We work with steel, high performance steel, sure, and SNC for some uh, parts. So it's, it's only from, from my part. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, he, he, okay. Later. It's actually we we, we don't have uh, time, so we need to carry on with the uh, with the other presentations. Uh, to some extent, your question or comment already anticipated what we are going to have at the end with the final discussion. So let's. Uh, if you have questions, please ask questions about the presentation itself, and then at the end we will have the final discussion. Uh, Mr. Bain will be in charge of that, and we can come. Uh, you can have these kind of comments, and we can we can discuss about that. Yes. O so, only one com so, sorry, Erika. Only one comment. If you are not able to talk uh, today, my my email is is there, and and obviously I, I would appreciate your your comments or your emails. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Ledo. So we are going to move now to the next presentation. So Mr. Riacci. So we are going to hear about Project Revolution. Um, so. Please come to the, yes. So our next speaker is Mr. Yakchi, uh, Yavuz Emre. He's a research and development manager at Farplas in Turkey. So thank you very much for being here with us, especially considering what's the, the, the difficult situation you're facing at home. So thank you for being here. So he's going to talk about Project Revolution. The thank floor you is much. yours. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to start with, with thank you to all the countries who have supported Turkey um, because of the uh, devastating uh, hurricane we had, uh, just like how we proceed in the EU uh, projects, we had a lot of support from Europe and the country is uh, trying to heal up. So. Um, um, Revolution um, is our um, project. Uh, Fireplus is the coordinator. Um, uh, I might have, I might know a little bit more than the, the rest of the cons consortium, uh, um, 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 especially um, uh, for the beginning of the project. Um, um, we had some uh, shop floor uh, questions um, uh, that contrib contributed to, to build the project idea with, with the other partners. Um, so, just like we need electrical vehicles um, and we need to um, um, make them lighter, all for, for the carbon footprint and for a more sustainable world, um, we had to um, um, speed up and make, make the preparations for the, for the circular economy. But um, uh, to our knowledge, in the shop floor, we knew recycled materials were not so easy to use, especially for the challenging parts like structural parts, aesthetic parts, lightweight parts. So we came up with the idea, why don't we prepare a whole consortium um, from cradle to cradle approach um, uh, and um, target these um, um, solutions. Uh, project is about supporting the electrical vehicle revolution through maximizing EV range and end of life vehicle recovery through optimization of recycled plastics and advanced light materials. Oops. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the consortium exists of um, OEMs, injection molders, tier ones like we we are, uh, research institutes um, on topics like uh, um, analysis, uh, material development, AI, uh, and uh, special additives manufacturers. Um, 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 I like the way that the, this consortium is built because uh, more or less each partner is contributing um, 
um, in parallel uh, without waiting the other ones to complete a task and then uh, starting their own. Um, all the progress in, in, in the revolution project is more or less shared by um, uh, the, the partners um, um, equally. Um, so um, we are the coordinator and, and some, some information about um, the, the budget and everything. Um, 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 one thing I would like to emphasize is um, uh, the, 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 uh, ex except for one, one thermoform case, the, the, the production method is, is injection molding here and prepare uh, materials um, um, f uh, to be used in injection molding and, and using um, artificial and intelligence to optimize the input of recycled materials. Uh, and um, yeah, so uh, uh, the target is to achieve 10 to 40 percent um, um, lightweight part wise and um, while selecting the parts, uh, the consortium cared uh, this, this sh these should be a family uh, to represent uh, a bigger share on the car and the final uh, lightweight potential um, could, be, could be a lot bigger that, that, that can be uh, than that is represented on, on, on each part. And, and also, just like I mentioned, the um, uh, the circularity potential um, uh, um, uh, should be high, and uh, in each part uh, we try to implement um, um, uh, circularity and recycled materials. Um, so the parts are back seat panel, B pillar cover, crash box, and lower rear bumper. These are aesthetical parts, structural parts, um, body parts. Um, uh, we thought when we do this, uh, achieve those lightweight potentials with circular material, uh, with introducing the right methodology uh, to produce the materials um, um, and uh, to, uh, to, to process them um, uh, while, um, um, while um, 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 Measuring anything during during all, all, all the processes, all the technical data, um, will will help us um, uh, to bring the, the solution to to the um, injection molding related um, automotive world. So um, our target is, as mentioned in here, um, light weighting, superior performance, and end of life advantages. Um, um, implementation um, is proceeding as, as, as mentioned in here, optimization of lightweight material, development of advanced process control, modeling and design, demonstration and, and validation. Um, so um, um, this is, uh, this is how, how, uh, how materials um, and energy in automotive should not be um, um, benefited. Uh, how we uh, introduce in um, revolution is the cradle to cradle approach um, where um, circular materials are brought back to, um, uh, to the production. Um, two cases are, are, are used here. Um, one is um, mechanical, me mechanically recycled um, materials are, are used in the parts. Uh, in the other case, um, also um, uh, polymers are um, 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 brought back to the monomorph monomer phase and also polymerization is, is, is occurring um, uh, to make these um, automotive polymers. So in a wider uh, explanation, uh, these are the, the, the parts that we um, target in the, in the project. Uh, the rear, rear back seat panel, um, um, there we use self-reinforced polyolefins and um, um, the polymer itself is, is used to make fibers 
and the polymer matrix. Uh, there, um, again, from, from PCR content, there, um, um, thermoform is, 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 is used, thermoforming is used, and the backseat uh, panel uh, is going to be uh, uh, manufactured. The other two parts are um, uh, B-pillar cover, which is an aesthetical part. It's made of PMMA. Uh, it's quite challenging to, uh, to recycle PMMA. Um, 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 and also it's quite challenging to make a lightweight part of, 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 of PMMAs. So um, design is a, a critical approach here to achieve the lightweight par uh, target. Um, the the t last two parts are in our plant actually, are going to be demonstrated in our plant, the crash box and the lower rear bumper. A crash box is a metal replacement part um, um, then Tofaj Fiat now uh, Stellantis um, will, will, will test the part and um, um, one of the classical most known approaches of, of lightweighting technology uh, metal replace, replacement is, is being used here and um, um, our uh, partners um, like VTT and Basel uh, have uh, introduced uh, new material families uh, uh, to achieve this, this part and um, the last part is the lower rear pumper um, uh, we will use uh, chemical foaming technology uh, in this part um, power plus is, is used to make um, uh, plastic parts even lighter there we you either use low density materials or uh, use microcellular or uh, chemical forming kind of technologies. Here we will use uh, th these. Um, 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 during during the, at, at this stage of this project, all uh, material um, categories uh, um, have been produced and uh, um, um, the, the, the tests, the, the FEA finite element analysis uh, um, tests ha have been have been made, um, uh, and um, um, the materials uh, seem to be uh, production ready at the moment. Uh, we will proceed with uh, with uh, tool development. Um, um, of course, the the, the, the part uh, design has, has followed uh, in cooperation with with material design, uh, and the tool development is is, is following <coughs> at the moment, and in very near future. We will uh, produce the parts and see uh, whether um, we have reached uh, our targets targets uh, that have been calculated in 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 in, uh, in the simulations. So um, part design is not the only uh, simulation we make uh, for this project. Um, one 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 other really important uh, approach is the process design. Um, 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 Farplus is um, one of the partners that contributes this project with, with data and AI, just like uh, Edener and, and VTT partners. Um, uh, um, before this project, we already had a big data system uh, in our plant, and um, um, we were um, uh, we were trying to understand the relation in between um, quality measures and um, and process parameters uh, by collecting collecting data uh, from uh, from the um, production. Um, there we could find some uh, some methods that that contribute to to, to quality issues, um, but without one fact, we were thinking. Um, um, okay, we were thinking everything is okay, even the material properties are okay. What if we use uh, circular materials, recycled materials uh, for our lightweight parts? What if uh, properties change uh, during the during the production? Um, we assume um, 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 material providers will uh, will um, send us. Uh, constant quality, constant property materials. Uh, what if this doesn't 
uh, work like that, or uh, we work with with a broader range of material providers. How we how we make a, a, a production line ready for uh, fluctuating fluctuating properties. Um, that's why this project is is quite important uh, during the metal production, metal production uh, partners like VTT and, and Basel, Basel are uh, working hard uh, for uh, circle material with constant properties. Uh, but also in our plant, with the support of our AI partner, Idenar, uh, we work on an intelligent line that can process uh, circular materials um, um, maybe with fluctuation properties in order to get uh, constant quality uh, parts all the time. So this AI pip pipeline uh, works for this and the models uh, have been uh, implemented already. Now we are building new sensors uh, to, um, especially to, uh, to measure the flow uh, um, uh, nature of the, of the material during the production because flow is quite crucial um, for injection molding. Uh, imagining um, polymer chains might be broken to shorter ones or they might, there might be still some longer ones. Your material can flow fast or slow during uh, from shot to shot. So we want to control this. Um, 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 even though this is a lightweight coal, we knew uh, circularity um, 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 is an approach for the same um, aim. And that's why we made, we made uh, an intelligent line uh, for this project. Okay, I'm, I'm about to um, uh, finish soon. Um, um, so the process modeling has been made, mat uh, material modeling uh, has been made. And, and component modeling has been made uh, during the work package three for, for all components, material and, and processes. And uh, um, for, for, uh, for, for our project parts um, um, like uh, crash box, uh, bumper, uh, especially for the crash box and bumper, uh, the uh, process modeling and, and, and uh, part modeling um, has taken um, a lot of work and time. So uh, objectives for demonstration and validation are uh, obtain lightweight with circular design approaches with advanced materials, evaluate EV range advantages with all demonstrations, structural part sensor applications. Not only we want to control the material uh, production and the process uh, just like the, the, the projects mentioned uh, before my talk, uh, we will have sensors on the parts and see how circular, circular material um, um, proceeds uh, in its uh, lifetime, in its work time uh, on the car. Uh, we will measure this. Uh, this is going to be um, measured via tensile strength in between uh, phases of the material. Sometimes you could say uh, in between uh, measuring happenings in between fibers and polymers, polymers and, and minerals and uh, polymer chains itself. These uh, sensors will, uh, will, will, uh, will measure how the part is taking the stress, stress during its uh, lifetime. Um, our approach is um, cradle to cradle since all actors, all partners uh, um, are trying to make a value together from uh, raw material back to raw material um, uh, manufacturing and, and use itself. Um, and this is our approach. Um, yes. Um, that's all. Thanks for attention. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Miss uh, Mr. Yakchi. Um, we have time for a very quick question. There. Thank you.
first of all, uh, congratulations for these really ambitious targets. Wide uh, light weighting up to 40% plus 8% recycling materials. I think this is really, really challenging. So my, my question would be, we have national projects. We have uh, used uh, packaging materials for, for olefins for recycling materials in automotive. And, we, and if we are happy and really have uh, addressing new materials, uh, new compounding me methods, we achieved less uh, deterioration of 5 to 10 percent compared to virgin material. And this is short term package material. And you have, and if you look on your uh, end of life, 12, 20 years, materials coming back, you have fatigue, and how you will achieve uh, your, your technical level plus eight uh, plus forty percent light weighting. This is yes, this uh, is a question. Uh, yes, um, um, this the forty and eighty um, uh, uh, was written during the proposal part wise. Um, of course, um, if anyone can make the whole car 40% uh, lighter, it's going to be a real challenge. Um, uh, um, st structural light weighting and chemical foaming um, uh, can reach uh, up to those levels. We had a battery carrier project uh, from metal to, to plastic in the past. Um, the part could be reduced to, to half with, with composites. Um, I think a crash box um, uh, in our case has potential, um, uh, it's a metal replacement and also chemical forming in FAR Plus, uh, we have um, um, examples of 30% of light weighting. Uh, there comes the question that uh, recycled materials uh, um, uh, during their lifetimes are becoming weaker uh, and it's it's hard to use them in this in this kind of lightweight challenges. That's the purpose of our project. Uh, if needed to fix the polymers uh, with maybe chain extenders, uh, with other additives, uh, and make them um, fresh again, measure what's happening during comp compounding, even in introduce some additives, um, um, during injection molding, uh, um, engineering additives. Uh, so um, I, I I agree with the uh, with the concern, uh, but uh, this is also uh, our target. Um, okay, we, we time wise we need to stop. <laughs> okay, thank you for the question and the uh, the answer. So thank you very much for the presentation as well. So we're now uh, going to move to the next presentation, which is about Project Levis. So Ms. Lazar, if you can come to the stage. So Ms. Lazar is a FEM engineer at Ita Nova in Spain, and she's going to present Project Levis for us. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so, uh, my name is uh, Clara Valero. I work at Ita Nova. We are the uh, project coordinators of Levis, which aims for advanced light materials for sustainable electrical vehicles by integration of eco-design and, and circular economy strategies. So first of all, we have uh, some information about the project. Uh, that's the, the topic under it was uh, granted as the sister projects that are being presented in, in this session. Uh, Levis is also a three-year project. We have just started our last year. And, uh, well, we, Ita Innova, are the project coordinator and the whole consortium is formed by 13 uh, partners. Eight of, our, of us are uh, research or, te or technical uh, organizations. And we have also five industrial partners that allows us to, uh, to translate our results into the, into the industry. And we are from, from seven different countries around uh, Europe. So um, the global objective of Levis is to develop, verify, and demonstrate uh, lightweight components for electric vehicles by adopting eco and circular design concepts 
from the design phase to the end of life stage. So um, we uh, are concerned about uh, what happens with our components during uh, their use and also after it. Uh, for that, we have selected three use cases, a suspension control arm, a battery holding set, which is divided into sub-cases, and a steerer, a steering column carrier group of cross carbon. Uh, the reason why we uh, selected these three components is because they have different, or they are made of different materials with different manufacturing processes. They have different functions. So uh, one of the uh, specific objectives uh, of Levis is to be able to replicate our uh, results or to use our materials and manufacturing processes in a higher number of components of the vehicle chassis or, and body. Um, obviously, another specific objective of our project is to obtain uh, a relevant uh, weight reduction in our components that will be later translated into the uh, whole vehicle uh, chassis and body, not, not the whole vehicle. Um, obviously, uh, another important uh, objective is to reduce production costs. Uh, as said before, there's no point of reducing, uh, for example, uh, weight if, if we don't reduce uh, costs. We are also uh, focused on uh, obtaining high uh, recycling or reducing rates of uh, our components. And finally, we are uh, concerned or another uh, specific objective of Levis is to reduce the global potential, um, the global warming potential uh, at vehicle level. So uh, now I will uh, present you some of, of our results. So uh, the first and or most important uh, result from the from the Levis project is uh, or are our new design of the demonstrators. So we have proposed different uh, hybrid metal composite designs which are easily uh, disassembled so uh, at the end of their life we can separate uh, for example uh, the metals and the composites and also we can later uh, also treat these composites to obtain the soup uh, components so those are the um, the current uh, designs most of them are uh, frozen uh, and some of them will be uh, in a uh, very soon frozen. So we have our final designs and we have estimated a weight reduction around 25, 35% at the component level, depending on the, uh, on the use case. And with the replicability study that we have performed, uh, we have selected or we have uh, find to which uh, other components that are not studied in, in Levis, this uh, reduction could be applied. So we estimate that we could obtain uh, up to a 25% of the of reduction in the, in the uh, chassis. Uh, now I will present you briefly some results uh, following different uh, parts of our project, the most relevant ones. So the first one is the development of new bio-based recyclable, recyclable and recycled materials uh, for electric vehicle components. In that concern, for example, we have been uh, or we have developed a cost-effective bio-based carbon fiber to replace uh, traditional commercial fibers. Um, also, with this uh, bio-based. Uh, fibers we uh, we are able to speed up the the uh, the production uh, process and the mechanical properties that we obtain are uh, on are close to the or to the target that was uh, proposed in the in the uh, initially we with these fibers and also with standard commercial fibers we have developed thermoplastic tapes uh, we have not found any equivalent product with the matrix that we have selected. We selected a thermoplastic uh, matrix, so it later will be easier to disassemble our components. We are also working on uh, short short uh, some components used short fiber composites 
and in those cases we are using uh, uh, specifically uh, recycled carbon fibers obtaining uh, good results in our components and also um, as I've said before we are also concerned about not only uh, disassemble metals and composite but also when we have a composite component that is not longer being used we want to separate uh, the, the constituents to manufacture new components with uh, recycled uh, fibers. So in this uh, aspect, we are, um, we are performing low, low temperature pyrolysis of the composites to, uh, to obtain this, uh, the, to separate the matrix and the fibers and later uh, reuse them. Another important part of our project is that we are proposing um, hybrid designs to replace uh, designs that uh, traditionally were made by uh, just one material. So uh, as an example, we have a, a side beam in, in the battery box, which was uh, initially made of uh, aluminum. And in this case, we have, uh, we have analyzed how we could improve uh, the, or maintain their performance and reducing uh, the, the weight. So um, we propose to reinforce the most critical zone with uh, composite pads, which allows us to, for example, reduce the overall uh, thickness of, of, the, of the profile. Uh, also in this line, we are working on different um, ways of improving the bonding between the different materials. Uh, we are working on, for example, on laser texturing of aluminum, which improves bonding and also uh, gives good uh, properties in terms of, of uh, the strength of the, of the joint. And also for the, as I said before, for the disassembly of the, of the different components, we are working on the development of a thermoplastic acrylic matrix, which is uh, specially designed for our purpose. So um, we have uh, created a new formulation of this matrix, so it has good uh, mechanical properties and also good properties uh, in terms of, of for the uh, for the manufacturing in terms of processability. And well. Um, Okay, another uh, part of our project is sensoring, which has been uh, previously also mentioned in, in some uh, projects. Uh, in this regard, we aim to include some sensors in our components so we can monitor uh, if, if they fail or their uh, state at, the, at their end of, of life. So for that, we have uh, manufactured different sensors uh, on demand with different, uh, we have tested different geometries, materials, sizes, and we are working on their integration uh, during manufacturing in our components. With the information that we obtain from these uh, sensors, we, well, we have developed some structural health uh, monitoring systems. So with different active and passive techniques, we are able to monitor, depending on the component, different uh, failures that may uh, that that could take place for example the bonding or the lamination in, in composites so um, yeah we obtain a lot of information uh, from from these sensors um, uh, in terms of well sustainability as I've said we want to obtain high uh, rates of recyclability and also um, uh, of reuse of, of our components. So for that we have, uh, we are working on the development of uh, the bonding on, on the man structural adhesive, uh, again, especially designed for our purposes. So this is a, a commercial structural adhesive that it's been modified with, uh, with particles that are thermally activated. So when we want to disassemble our components, we apply temperature and we obtain uh, so far a, a really good uh, the bonding uh, effectiveness. So we can easily separate the materials to reuse or to, or to recycle or, or whatever we want to do with them. Um, also, we have um, developed 
an eco-design toolkit uh, to integrate life cycle thinking and circular economy in the design process. So this is a tool that gives you some uh, suggestions, advice, tips uh, when you want to, to do a design. So you include this um, eco-design uh, uh, perspective in, in, your, in your design. Uh, finally, uh, about dissemination, uh, also we have done uh, presentation in many conferences, uh, we have written papers, but I would like to, um, to highlight the uh, cross-project cooperation with the sister projects. As has been previously said, we have uh, created the NLITVs cluster, so we can join uh, our forces and, yeah, and communicate our, our results. Um, we are also organizing uh, an event with the Revolution Project about censoring. Uh, if any of you is interested on, on participating, you can ask me or my colleague if you want, and I will give you uh, some information. And we have also presented uh, two patents from the, uh, well, from the Mod 2A, which is the, the battery box. I would like to, to finish with the impact of, of our project. Uh, as I present previously, the most, uh, let's say, uh, or one of the most important objectives of the project is to obtain a, a significant weight reduction. With our materials and manufacturing processes, we obtain lighter components. Also, we obtain, uh, let's say, safer components thanks to the structural health monitoring that can uh, give us information about the uh, state of, of the component and give some prediction about their uh, remaining uh, useful life. Uh, another important uh, point is the uh, speed up of the production with, uh, with some one-shot uh, approaches that we have, uh, I have not presented here today, but we have also developed them in, in the project. Um, also, we expect that with our advances, we will be able to uh, reuse or recycle, or recycle a high amount of the materials that we are using to manufacture our components. Um, yeah, so uh, another important impact uh, from our point of view is that all the uh, developments that we are doing in Levis can be applied not only to the components that we have analyzed, but also to many other uh, components in the automotive sector and also even in other uh, sectors. Why not? Uh, so I'm talking about the uh, manufacturing, dismantling, repairing, recycling, recovery, also the structural health monitoring techniques that we have uh, developed. And uh, finally, a uh, subsequent uh, impact, let's say, is the reduction of the associated energy consumption and the recycling uh, improvement, improvements that will lead to, uh, to, to reduce the global warming potential of uh, the components, which is well, beneficial for, for everyone, I think. Um, so that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can take one question, <coughs> if there is any, from the audience. No questions. No questions. Um, <laughs> ah, there is one. Um, yeah. So David Storer from CLEPAR, the Association of Automotive Suppliers. Uh, my question is about the performance of bio-based carbon fibers, if the performance is equivalent to other carbon fibers. Um, right now, as far as I know, <laughs> I'm not, uh, we are not manufacturing them. Uh, the properties are not at the same level, but quite close. And uh, initially in the proposal, we estimated we, we knew that, so we estimated a, 
a property level and we have almost reached it so right now it's not the same but i i guess it will be in maybe not for levis but <laughs> in the future what is the manufacturing route of the bio-based fibers the Sorry? manufacturing route what is the origin of the bio-based carbon fibers i think it's a cellulose precursor yeah they use okay. yeah but the, uh, i'm not the, <laughs> the the expert so okay thank you very much thank you miss lazar so let's <laughs> let's move to the to the next presentation so let me introduce the next speaker so mr bianchi alvisa he's project manager at matris in italy and you're he's going to talk us about project flamingo yes. so when you're ready Click on Flamingo. There we are, okay. <coughs> yeah, or <laughs> so I warn you, I didn't use the same uh, template, but was not on purpose. <coughs> So Flamingo uh, is a fabrication of lightweight aluminum metal matrix composites and validation in green vehicles. I said my name is uh, Alvise Bianchin. Uh, Matres is the R&D branch of uh, MBN Nanomaterialia. That is a company involved in the project for the coordination and also for the manufacturing of one of the key components that is the uh, nanoparticles. So the consortium, as you can see, is uh, spread all over Europe. Uh, the project is uh, uh, of the same kind of the other presented today, uh, but has, it is a bit longer. And uh, all the, the partners has been uh, um, collected together in order to have a good coverage of all the uh, production processes that can uh, deal with the aluminum uh, metal matrix nanocomposites. So the uh, metal alloying, uh, the low pressure die casting, green sand casting, topology optimization, extrusion welding, non-destructive techniques for the um, uh, material uh, characterization, so the component characterization, and recycling. There are, of course, activities supporting the results, in particular, SCA uh, standardization, and uh, here not mentioned also uh, nano safety assessment. So the uh, objectives of the project are uh, quite focused on the uh, material itself. So we have uh, the production of the uh, nanoparticles additives, the solid state mechanical alloying, their casting uh, into, into billets uh, through um, techniques like uh, ultrasonication and steering systems, and then the use of this in uh, die casting, uh, low pressure die casting, green sand casting, and extrusion to have the components. This is supported by activities on assessing the weldability of the material that we get uh, out of this, of this process, so weldability on the components, the topology optimization of the components itself in order to maximize the possibility to have a lightweight red component and uh, uh, the validation of uh, the recycling of these, ma these materials uh, using uh, techniques that are already available uh, by the companies that uh, are doing uh, already recycling of aluminum. The overall target is to obtain uh, a material and components that can be uh, valid uh, for substitution of steel particularly on electric vehicles. So uh, the overall flow of uh, activities and uh, processes is this one. Uh, there is the uh, initial uh, manufacturing of these uh, master batches. Uh, they use in foundry to have this cast that can be used for extrusion on die casting. 
the uh, installation of the components in a vehicle, uh, the, the actual use of the vehicle, and then the recycling. The uh, field test is a part of the project that basically make, it, make this project to extend more than the other uh, four that we have seen today. Uh, one important thing to notice is the fate of the nanoparticles and the role of recycling. So mm, one of the core idea of this project is to follow the material evolution throughout all the value chain, all the supply chain, and to be sure that so when it reaches to the market, when it reaches to uh, the, the, the its end of life, it can be treated as any other aluminum component, so without uh, special regards about it. And in order to do that, uh, we knew that nanoparticles has to be somehow removed from uh, the cast eventually. And uh, this also plays a big role in the overall costing uh, of the material. Since we are dealing with nanoparticles, there is also a good part of a nano safety assessment because we want to be sure to provide uh, eventually all the guidelines, all the informations for the use of these materials in uh, any stage of, uh, of the value chain without uh, any, any troubles. So at the moment, uh, uh, we are focusing on a couple of uh, quite representative components from uh, this vehicle produced by Ike, one of our partners, uh, which are the stealing knuckles and uh, the rear frame. So these two parts here. The idea is then to do an extrapolation exercise once these uh, components has, uh, are validated and once we have all the information on the mechanical properties of the material uh, to other vehicles and uh, to the entire uh, Ike vehicle. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, uh, the, the target uh, for the cost is uh, three euros per, for each kilogram saved because these materials are not going to cost less the, than the current materials. So currently uh, we reached uh, at component level a reduction in weight uh, between 31 and 58 percent on the steel knuckle and 35 on the extruded rear frame. The difference between these two numbers is strongly related with the uh, um, technique for, for the casting. Uh, yeah, I have an example here. This is the components, the original steel component, uh, the topology optimized component in aluminum, and the actual component obtained uh, after the casting. There are uh, different techniques of casting. One uh, that we are using in the project is the sand casting, in which the mold is quite flexible in terms of uh, the uh, design of the components. This allows to reach the maximum light weightening possible. Uh, the uh, low pressure die casting, on the other hand, uh, needs to have a, a, a mold uh, which is a, a as that put some constraints on the design of the components and therefore uh, a lower overall uh, weight reduction. Uh, we, um, we are not applying uh, the same topology optimization on the extruded parts, of course, uh, because for that wouldn't make much sense, but uh, the uh, FEM analysis on uh, the uh, current components utilized in the vehicle and the uh, new one uh, that has been designed for uh, the, the, the extrusion die uh, that, uh, that is being, uh, being used in these days actually, uh, will uh, provide uh, also for the, 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 the extrusion part uh, the same, uh, the same uh, results. Uh, on top of those uh, weight reductions, uh, we uh, are um, accounting, uh, we are working in parallel on the material itself uh, that allows an increase of mechanical properties both on the uh, alloy for uh, forecasting and in the alloy for extrusion. Uh, there are a bunch of axes here because we tried uh, different uh, uh, alloy compositions uh, in order uh, for on one side, on one hand to uh, to pick the, the best performing one. On the other hand, also to uh, gain knowledge on how to transfer this concept of uh, um, 
metalmatics nanocomposites onto different uh, onto different um, aluminum alloys. So uh, I didn't introduce much the uh, concept of metalmatic nanocomposite, but basically uh, the idea is to have uh, uh, this additive that is rich in nanoparticles can be used in the cast uh, without uh, giving to the uh, casting company the problem to deal with uh, direct handling there of uh, nanoparticles. And uh, these nanoparticles enter in the, in the casts uh, as a, a green refiner, basically, uh, improving the overall uh, heat strength, uh, tensile strength, reducing the elongation, and uh, in some cases improving also the, the, the uh, elastic module. These, these nanoparticles are introduced uh, in order to be cost effective. We try different uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, recipes uh, in keeping always in mind the target of the cost. For example, uh, uh, boron carbide nanoparticles were ruled out uh, quite, uh, quite soon. Aluminum oxide nanoparticles were one of our favorite in terms of costs, but uh, eventually resulted not in the best uh, way in performance to cost ratio. So in order to maximize the results, as said, uh, we are uh, performing this other asset of activities, uh, especially the aluminum recycling, uh, with an actual uh, company doing recycling of aluminum. Um, the um, writing down of these guidelines for forming, uh, assembling, and uh, handling of the uh, nanoparticles, always considering a nano safety. These are meant for increase the replicability of uh, our results into uh, by, by other companies, by other um, casting companies, extrusion companies, and uh, uh, and of course the assessment of methodologies of the evaluation of new components that is part of the non-destructive techniques activities that needs to be done on the final components and uh, during the the months in which the components will be used in uh, in, uh, in service. So about the, the, the uh, Enlight uh, EV uh, cluster of projects, this was something uh, that has been initiated because we, we knew uh, in all uh, bet between our projects there will be not a single winning solution for uh, lighting, uh, uh, light weightening uh, uh, electric vehicles and possibly to have a platform, platform in which to put together uh, all, the, uh, all the results in a single portfolio. Uh, so far, we, I think we, we uh, successfully uh, reached the, the possibility to uh, do some activities, common activities on LACA, LCA, at least on the front of uh, sharing our result together in a webinar that can be also a, a first step uh, forward to share something uh, uh, more like uh, baselines for evaluation of the results. Um, ideally, uh, we will uh, have together the possibility to have stronger voices and bring evidences to uh, technical committees on ISO. For our, from our side, for example, the, 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 the activity is more on uh, recognizing uh, the uh, aluminum metamatics nanocomposites as a material for, uh, for the automotive industry. As regards impacts, uh, in the short term, of course, there are impacts that are uh, mainly related to the uh, vehicle that we are uh, currently uh, targeting. So more off-road capabilities, uh, more functions. Uh, this is an uh, utility vehicle. Increase the working range of the, of the fleet and uh, enable more flexibility in vehicle configuration. These are all directly derived by uh, substituting components with uh, aluminum ones, lighter ones, and therefore increasing uh, uh, the overall range, basically. But uh, on more uh, medium-term impact, 
there could be the possibility of an overall redesign of the vehicle, in which the reduction of weight enabled by uh, the use of aluminum metal matrix nanocomposites uh, results in a reduced uh, amount of battery and possibly also a redesign of the entire vehicle uh, engine system. This, of course, is something that uh, our uh, partner Ike is uh, uh, looking as a medium term impact uh, of the of the project, but could be, of course, uh, implemented by uh, by by other car manufacturers and in, in other vehicle sectors. And we are actually uh, open for that. Uh, this, of course, is just the more evident uh, impact. Uh, the, the, if you want the tip of the iceberg, uh, what uh, lies behind is the, the possibility to establish wide guidelines for workers using nanoparticles enabled materials. That for us is very important to, 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 to support the, the, the uptake in the market of this uh, uh, solution. Similarly, the guidelines for the recycling, we are not uh, aiming to, to um, invent new way for recycle these materials, but just provide uh, guidelines on how to use the already existing technologies by the, uh, the aluminum recycler uh, in order to deal with this, uh, this material. Because of course, uh, at the beginning, uh, if these are on the market, uh, there will be not enough uh, aluminum metal matrix nanocomposite to be collected by their own and recycled by their own properly. So, this guideline will be uh, for, for uh, improve the, the, the uh, recycling capabilities of, uh, uh, of the current practices. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the availability of a uh, wider portfolio of sustainable material is one of uh, the, the, uh, the main goal. The support of the inclusion of uh, nano um, the concept of uh, nanoparticles in the current uh, regulation and standards, uh, especially in uh, the uh, market uh, of uh, uh, automotive, and uh, manufacturing guidelines uh, for, for for casting and welding, and this will be the main uh, uh, the main results for the uh, uptake in the market of this material. And I think. I covered all the all the parts. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? If not, I if not, I have one. Can you sure. elaborate a little bit more on the motivation for using met aluminium metal matrix nanocomposites in, in comparison to conventional aluminium grades? Yeah. Well, this gives uh, the possibility. Um, to, to, to increase the mechanical properties of the current available aluminum uh, um, and it is currently used by Costellium for the um, um, high strength uh, line of aluminums. Uh, there are different uh, um, um, uh, mechanisms that increase the mechanical properties. Um, one of the downside is the um, flexibility of the material, so it will be uh, more more rigid. But of course, uh, it, has, it is always a compromise. Um, in general, it's uh, uh, nanoparticles are providing um, smaller grains in the crystal structures, <laughs> and uh, let's say uh, so uh, point in which the dislocation are. Uh, scattered and uh, blocked. And basically performance based. Performance based, yes. Thank you. Maybe one question. Yes, one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, sorry. I'm Frederic Chausson from Strat Anticipation. I was just wondering are the two your project and the previous project can they be combined? Can what? Can they be combined? Because you're working on the aluminium and the previous project also on aluminium. You're on the nanoparticles, you were on the, on the plastic combined. So just a question. Yeah, indeed, uh, they can be combined. Uh, we, have, we can have 
many different combinations between these projects. Uh, for example, with the FADIC for light, we can have our materials validated by the methodology. And uh, with, uh, with, with ALMA, we can have our materials included uh, in, uh, in BASVIM. Uh, uh, these topics are, uh, are live in, uh, the, in, in the cluster. And uh, as regards the combination uh, with uh, uh, um, multi-materials, yeah, probably it's, uh, it's something that at the moment we are not focusing on because the uh, extrusion, uh, well, we, we are not working with lamination uh, of uh, aluminum. And uh, so it's a step that we lack in order to have a, a, proper, a proper match. But uh, on the, uh, yeah, on the calculation uh, can, be, can be done, definitely. With the, the properties, uh, the material card can be definitely used uh, and see which is the overall combination of the two approaches. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so l looking at the time, let's move to the to the next speaker, which is also the last presentation for today. So uh, let me introduce you, Mr. Aramburu Enric. He is Fluid Engineering Product Manager at Idiada in Spain. And he's going uh, to talk uh, about project upscale. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> okay. Let me try to link this presentation. You will realize it's a completely different topic, but links perfectly with what's been shown so far. You've been showing very interesting projects about new materials, uh, even new processes, very different ones, very complex, I would say, also. Okay. And now the question comes when, well, this has been in the, in the frame of R&D projects, maybe three years, three and a half, but when it comes to the real car development, a new real uh, program, okay? So uh, when it comes to this, the question is, do the uh, engineering companies, the OEMs, have the right tools for decision-making uh, whether to, to use it, not use it, in, in which extent, and so on? And, but this, this, well, these development uh, teams also are not facing only this while well, introducing these complex materials, but also, uh, well, th there is a boom of projects. Um, the, the, there is, uh, well, simulation needs or decision-making needs are growing hugely, okay? So the question that was posed when, when, when the consortium started this project or when we made the proposal was, do, do we have the decision-making tools necessary for this, for what's coming? And the question is also now, for the future. Do we have this available uh, in, for, for, for speeding up the projects, for doing, uh, you, you know, when you follow the news, the number of new EB programs and projects for each brand is, is huge, okay? Uh, so um, do the, well, the tools that we had at the time that we have which are typically finite element, CFD, finite volume, etc. Okay, can deal with this. Uh, can we accelerate this? Okay, and, and that's the main question. So here we are. Uh, well, basically you are simulation people, simulation people from OEMs, simulation people from uh, uh, software vendors, uh, from uh, engineering companies, and, and also experts in artificial intelligence. So that's about the project. It's about can artificial intelligence help in this process? Can accelerate the development of cars? Um, so um, that, that's the summary of the project, okay? So back five years ago, we started from, let's say, quite blank page. Uh, we knew that in the academia, uh, there were nice ideas, inspiring ideas to, to do so, and that could help in this process, okay? So we have been develop, uh, devoting 42 months uh, to uh, developing this framework in, in for different applications, but with this objective, accelerating, uh, colleagues said today, uh, time is very important, speed is very important, so accelerating the process of developing a car with these very complex new materials that are coming. But not only materials, uh, we'll see later, uh, 
when we're thinking about the challenges in efficiency, of course, rolling resistance is very important, weight is very important, but aerodynamics as well. So this project also focuses in, in these two applications. So uh, in key figures, upscale uh, had the challenge to uh, uh, accelerate the simulation methods in several orders of magnitude. Accelerate development, so typical uh, program development in 20% of an EV, okay? Uh, and what, that, that's, that's the key figure we, that we were uh, afterwards measured for. So, and then we choose two applications. I anticipated a bit, uh, aerodynamics is one, CFD is one, crash is, is the second one. And the reason for doing so is because these are the two uh, disciplines that are um, requiring more computational resources. So here's where we have more potential to reduce simulation times, okay? Uh, and well, here I try to explain what, what we did. The, so um, we'll show next the results, of course, all the results, but I, I'm taking a bit more time in showing the motivation and, 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 and the object of the, of the project. So traditionally we have been doing what uh, Mr. Einstein is doing. We simulate the physics. We go from the physics, when we do a crash, we know the laws of the physics that uh, we need to solve in that structural problem. And uh, in the end, we, we end up with a big uh, equation system that we need to solve. So that, what we are solving by finite element, it works very well. We have been doing this for 30 years, okay? but. Let me tell you also, in these last 30 years, there have not been really breakthroughs in this. This theory was developed before the computers came, applied when we had the computers available, and we're still doing the same. We do this very well, the results are very good, but it's not fast. For a crash or for a CFD, typically you, you may need maybe one overnight run in order to get uh, this, the results. So we want to improve this. And, and the way to improve this is by introducing artificial intelligence. Artifi artificial in intelligence is completely different. It's all the way around. We are not really solving the physics, but it's very fast. In the end, um, artificial intelligence is a, let's say, well, as its name says, it, it, it creates some um, polynomials that are very easy to compute. Okay, that's why it's so quick. It's only solving linear algebra. Um, so after this training process, what the training process means is that we are creating kind of polynomial um, that's self-created, okay? So when we get this polynomial, we get the solution. That's why it's extremely fast. And it's happening a bit what happened with finite element also, that this is accelerated because now the computers are much and much more capable. And in difference also of the finite element method, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, it's much more um, open. It has a lot of methods, uh, much more versatile, much more flexible. And here is where the research comes, in, in which methods we use and how we, we use it. In the end, we apply one method, it self uh, learns, it self creates the polynomials, and we just push the button and get the result. That's extremely fast. Let me go already to the results. We applied these to two fields. First to aerodynamics, second to crash. In the field of aerodynamics, we had a dream. Instead of having an overnight run, or maybe five hour run, six hour run, we want to get, get the result, the aerodynamic forces in, in seconds, or in, matter, in less than one second, okay? That's our dream. Um, so for doing so, what we figured out in the, in the consortium was if we can, if we have a new shape, we want to know the aerodynamic force on that shape. Um, if we can parameterize this shape in order to get kind of digital signature of the shape, uh, a mask of the shape, okay? In the end, if we can represent the shape by a, by a very limited number of figures, uh, for instance, 15, 20 figures, okay? Um, we can link the result to this. So we get all the, a lot of data of the aerodynamic forces on very different uh, body modifications, and we populate a database with this, and then we apply a uh, machine learning, and we have the machine learning model. That's the idea, okay? But for doing so, we need to create a lot of data. We need to 
pre-run a lot of simulations. Um, we need to generate these simulations in, in this. If you don't have the data before, you need to generate them, okay? So first we need um, uh, to parameterize the model and modify to generate a, a lot of variants of this model. For doing so, we uh, use it what we call the geometrical parametrization. So we just morph the vehicle based and we know um, uh, which dimensions have been modified, okay? So that's the characterization of our vehicle. Um, and with this data, we populate the database and we, uh, and, and we train the, the model. But that's not enough because for, in this case, <coughs> um, you always need this, to modify this, this shape in the same way by modifying the dimensions. But what if a designer modifies by his own, by, with kind of morphing tool or maybe just uh, by clay, typically uh, clay model where you just scan the model, well, you get a new shape. Um, and we want to characterize, to reduce this at uh, uh, this mask, okay? So we need to develop uh, uh, what we call universal parameterization method that reduces a shape to a very limited number of, uh, of, of data, okay? In this case, we are showing uh, an example of this, that this is for the 2D, but it's reduced that definition of the vehicle to 13 values, okay? When we did for 3D, uh, could be done in 17, less than 20 values. So when we have a completely new shape, this can be represented by 10 numbers, okay? So it, this is the definition of our new, new shape, okay? So that's, uh, well, we are using this uh, autoencoder technique, that's a machine learning technique, uh, um, that uh, allows to do this, okay? So we need this, we, did, uh, we developed this in the frame of this project, and then, what we did is generate this design of experiments. In this case, uh, we took um, one of the vehicles. We get 1,000 different variants of the vehicle. And uh, we got the results in CFD. Uh, we got the aerodynamic forces and we got the airflow maps around, okay? Uh, we drop all this into the machine learning. In, in this case, uh, um, uh, well, different techniques were, were, were tied. And, uh, and then, well, as you can see here, um, we, we are getting very similar flow maps to what was introduced. With, so these velocity maps, pressure maps in the flow, in the air, um, are re-achieved with an error of less than 2%. And then the aerodynamic forces. Um, that's the same. We uh, have all these variants with the aerodynamic forces. We drop this into the system, we train this, and when we recompute, we can get the aerodynamic forces in, 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 in one second, okay? Uh, and, and then here we fulfill the dream of our designers, because our designers want to basically modify the shape and at the very same moment know if the aerodynamics has been improved or it, it's been, uh, it's worst, okay? So, um, and we can achieve this with uh, an average error of uh, 0.65%. So that's, that's very good, okay? So that's the first challenge achieved in this project. We can get the aerodynamic forces in real time. So that's an example of, of using artificial intelligence, machine learning, to solve the, um, well, the flow field and the aerodynamic forces. And then I go to the next block, which, uh, sorry, no, I was not finished here. <laughs> um, we introduce, we, we introduce machine learning for other applications. So all, still in the field of um, CFD, we improve it. The, you know, uh, we have had to run 1,000 simulations, okay? That's extremely costly. So um, we had also the goal of improving the traditional CFD process, which in, uh, includes different steps, uh, the meshing, the simulation, the post-processing, and so on. Um, we, we introduced machine learning in, in, in some key steps, uh, in the meshing, in the initialization of the simulation. So uh, with this technique, um, we, we look at the former simulations. Um, we look which one is closer to the new shape, and, and we map these uh, flow fields on this simulation, uh, adapting perfectly to the new shape, okay? So that's a perfect starting point. That's a key technique. Then uh, the, the, the volume measure was extremely uh, also um, accelerated. Uh, and then also the solver. In the end, we reduced the simulation time from five hours in this case to half an hour for the whole process, volume meshing, simulation, and extracting the results. So that's a second application of the, 
of the machine learning. Third application is still in the, in, in the field of CFD. Um, what I was showing uh, before these five hours to zero half hours is with a bit simplified approach that's called Reynol Average Navi Stokes uh, CFD solution. Basically, what we do, you know, in flow, um, uh, the, 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 the natural feature is, is really chaotic. The, you, you will have the turbulence that's really hard to model. Indeed, it's impossible. Um, so, a uh, typical technique is averaging these this fluctuations, okay? And then the solver needs to make some assumptions, some simplifications to, um, to uh, compute this, this, um, the, the whole system, assuming that in some zones there are these, these fluctuations, okay? Um, that's the, where we introduce more error. So we had an idea that we have a different approach that's what we call high fidelity simulations, where we, yes, we simulate all the vortex and all the fluctuations and so on. And we had the idea that um, what we were missing in the simplified approach, that basically it's the computation at what's called so far Reynolds stresses, depended on, the, um, on some variables in this high fidelity. So we, we started to, we tried to learn to, to get patterns out of this to be used in the simple, basically in the end improving the accuracy of this sim, uh, simplified CFD simulation. So that's the third application in, in CFD. And finally, well, the second block, the application to crash, which is maybe more close to the audience today. Uh, a lot of uh, structural uh, analysis, analysis people can be here. The challenge that we had, it, it, it's really a challenge. Uh, it's simulating um, a crash with a battery pack uh, with all, all the battery cells and being able to predict short circuit in, in any battery, uh, in, in any cell inside the battery, okay? Uh, so far, this was not possible back in, in 2018. Um, and why, why it's not possible? Because you can see here, these are all the layers that you will find in a single cell. So only one cell, you can find thousands in, in, in a battery pack, uh, only one cell could be, uh, I don't know, 5 million, 8 million finite elements, okay? If we sum up everything, that you, you need one, one, one century to, to simulate this, okay? So that, that was not feasible. And here is where it comes, the, the machine learning approach. We use what it's called so far reduced order models. Uh, and basically, what we do is... We tried different techniques, but in the end, the most successful one, which has been developed by ESI Group, um, is um, using... Um, now, the, 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 it's appearing a name that's uh, constitutive-less material cards. Basically, is using a, a material card that learns from, let's say, mac micro or meso models. Okay? That's the, our meso model is what we are showing up. So, we simulate one of these uh, with many different load cases. Uh, with these results, uh, we, this machine learning tool creates the material card uh, for the cell, uh, which is a, a, an isotropic material card uh, that, um, that links with this, okay? So can link with, with, with uh, can learn from all this, okay? And then you can introduce this in the overall crash uh, simulation, okay? Not only, being able to simulate the deformations, but also uh, looking at an another variable that's the uh, risk of short circuit. This was introduced uh, and tested and finally used uh, by um, two OEMs in the project, in this case, uh, Volkswagen and, and Fiat. And in the end, we, the result is, is shown here. We can, well, in, in, in this, let's say, very challenging, we, we had really to... <laughs> Um, to, to um, apply very extreme load cases with this pole uh, penetration uh, in order to test it. Uh, but in the end, the result is, yes, this was implemented, this computes, uh, and, and this can be used uh, afterwards, okay? So uh, here it comes the end of my results, okay, uh, explanation, and... Uh, I, I, and here, well, a couple of slides about the summary, okay? Uh, about yeah, two slides. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, f first conclusion is that um, 
we, we have been successful in this. This is implemented with different levels of uh, TRL. Okay, I can explain a bit why and uh, for each uh, of, 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 the, of the topics. Um, basically, uh, in the case of crash, uh, this can be used already uh, by companies, but needs kind of uh, customization special support from the software vendor. So it's not uh, available in when you buy the software already. It's kind of beta, beta version and, and, and can, can be done. Uh, same for the CFD accelerated process. Um, uh, in this case, there is a software vendor here, it's called uh, Engis. Uh, if you use their uh, uh, software, uh, most of this accelerated um, CFD process is, is included, okay? Uh, in the case of turbulence modeling, <coughs> it, it was just an approach, we, but we are still far from closing the, the process. Um, and, and real cast prediction, it's, uh, sorry, real aerodynamics prediction, it's already a possibility, and we are not the only ones. When we started, um, this uh, was completely new. Uh, we know that there are several companies here already doing this. The problem is linking this with the design process. So linking what we have been doing so far with the design tool, so that you can read directly the design tool and then uh, get the, the, the aerodynamic forces. And uh, I wanted just to, to finish uh, by uh, commenting a bit on what are the limitations of what we have seen so far. Uh, there are also some, some I would say some drawbacks or some limitations to introduce this in the future for, for, for the community, okay? Uh, data generation can be extremely costing and, and this can be limiting very much. So if we, in any case, for instance, for aerodynamics, we need to generate 1,000 CFD simulations for afterwards computing very quickly, maybe it's not worth. It's, it's better to use as, as a standard because otherwise, uh, first, you, you have been devoted, I don't know, two months in, in generating cases and cases and cases. So that's, 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 we don't like this, okay? Um, and, and the second point is because of this. Um, the solution is restricted to what we have. So in the end, um, in the end, this is kind of knowledge management, but it's not guessing out of this design space. That's one of the problems and of the areas of research for the future, okay? Um, so in the end, th these are the limitations and we figure out some of the, some key areas where we can work uh, to, to, to progress with this, okay? Uh, hybrid technology, well, uh, a second, well, I forgot commenting on a very important point. We, we are linking the, losing the link with the reality here, with the physics, okay? And, and this could be, well, something that uh, people doesn't li don't like. So we need always to correlate, validate, and so on. So uh, here's where this hybrid approach, mixing machine learning with traditional CAE, traditional FEM, traditional CFD, is where it works well and is one of the trends. Finally, continuous machine learning um, in order to, well, we, we had this 1,000, but if we, for the next vehicle, we can take advantage of this, that's very important, the, being able to apply these techniques. And, and finally, um, this constitutive less material cards, I think is here, and this will, will be uh, con applied for the future in, in applications like the ones that have been shown so far today. Sorry for the time. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Ambur. Uh, we don't have time to take questions now, so I'm going to give the floor now to Mr. Bain uh, for the final discussion, and then if there is time for uh, questions for you and for, for concerning project upscale, maybe we can do yeah. it at I the end. I ask the presenter to, to sit in the front. Yeah, we, so we, we allowed uh, already a question to the presentation, so now the remaining 20 minutes uh, we would like to dedicate to, the, to overall discussion on what we have learned today. So uh, first I would like to give you the chance to ask questions to the presenters. Uh, are there further questions? As David. And, okay, so David Storer again from CLEPA. Um, so yeah, referring to uh, the different projects, particularly the ALMA project and the Levi's project, 
Uh, it's very interesting, this interaction between light weighting and recyclability, sustainability in general. Um, yeah, and it was, uh, I heard very clearly the mentioning of uh, the adhesive, structural adhesive, to join different materials, which could be a very good option for the future, and the fact that they can be debonded through temperature. And also the, um, the recycling of the composite materials in the Levi's project is very interesting. Um, I have a specific question on the, um, on the use of materials that are steel and plastic that I think was mentioned in the ALMA project, and also you mentioned about glass fibre. Does that, do they pose any challenges when it comes to recycling? Who wants to answer? <laughs> Can you speak in the microphone, please? Sorry. Press on the button. Yeah. yeah, it's working. Okay. Uh, from Alma Project, as, as you mentioned, our focus is on disassembly at the end of the life, and we are thinking of disassembling different components. One component from steel, and modern component for, for about uh, SMC material. But it's true that uh, there are one of the steels that is uh, developing at this moment is one sandwich. Uh, this sandwich is steel, plastic and steel, and they are also working in the fact of disassembly at the end of life. Uh, the adhesive they are using at this moment is, is not the same that we are using for the, for the, for the joining of components, but it's true that uh, the idea is that uh, at the end of the life we can disassemble this sandwich and separate the, the two types of, of materials, it's clear. Thank you. Further question? It, maybe I can, can step in here. It goes to all of the project. So what are basically are the lessons learned from your project in terms of circle economy? So it's, in many of the cases, you, you're look, focusing on disassembly. Only, I think it was in the, uh, in the revolution project where you also looked into secondary material resources. But what are the challenges basically in the multi-material design in terms of closed loop versus open loop circular economy strategies. What are the lessons learned from your projects? Who wants to start? <laughs> I start again. <laughs> yeah. um, from, from our vision, uh, the, start, the, the lesson is, the main lesson is that uh, there are um, many technologies uh, available today for recycling the materials, but you have to uh, to determine the type of material. So there are solutions for steel, there are solutions for aluminium, there are solutions for plastics, there are solutions for uh, other resigns. But at the end, the big problem is that we are not able to separate of these materials. So uh, this is the main reason why we are focused on this assembly, because we think that the technologies are there, but we have to be sure that we can separate all the materials. So is it the tendency to go for a lesser variation of materials to allow a better recycling? And what about open versus closed yeah. loop? We are open to multi-material, but we, sh we have to be sure that we can separate at the end of the life. But what are you doing then with the materials at the end of the life? That is also the point. Uh, it depends. <laughs> 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 it depends if we are able to reuse, we can reuse, and if not, we, we should be recycled, it's clear. Maybe Clara? In yeah, in, in our case, um, what are we doing with the materials once that we, for example, separate the matrix and the fibers in a composite? Yeah. Um, we are going to remanufacture new components and we are going to test them to see the differences between the original ones and the recycled ones. Especially we are going to reuse the fibers uh, as far as I know. Do you see differences in the quality of the, the materials then what you are going to reuse? So the quality of the secondary materials has a strong impact on the design and on mm -hmm. the manufacturing route. Uh, we have not yet started <laughs> this phase because <laughs> it's the last one. Once we decide the, the design or the component that we are going to remanufacture, we will start this yeah. stage, but we are not on that point right now. Yeah. And maybe 
uh, Alvis, uh, regarding the, you, you indicated in your presentation, you're working with nanoparticles. What yeah. is then the challenge with regarding nanoparticles when you're going to recycle the metal, metal yeah, composition? Actually, as regards uh, nanoparticle recycling, we gave up immediately. So yeah. we knew uh, it was not possible to have something effective on recycling the nanoparticles. But uh, that is around 1% of the overall alloy. Uh, on the other hand, the aluminum recycling is uh, uh, fundamental. It yeah. uh, mm -hmm. doesn't make much sense to substitute steel with aluminum if uh, the aluminum is not uh, recycled. So from an LCA point of view. So, so you uh, need to recycle the metal matrix composite back into metal matrix? Back, back into aluminum. Back, directly back into aluminum? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's... Uh, that that's the only way we can be sure that uh, our material can uh, reach into the market. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, the idea as regards separation of different components, separation of different aluminums and the quality of aluminums uh, is uh, really connected with the kind of alloy that you want to use in the car. And uh, I think our approach uh, is uh, compliant within um, a possible future trends into reducing the number of alloys into possibly just one, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. They were, they were, I think first in the back, and, and Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we cannot use another microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not a question, ju but just an information. I mean, as the participants of this session are interested in transnational R&D projects in lightweighting, I wanted to draw your attention that there are funding schemes even beyond Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, I'm Andreas Storder from the Austrian Ministry for Mobility, uh, Energy, Environment, uh, Innovation and Technology, so it's just a long title. We joined our forces among member states for a Eureka call, which will be f finished uh, in on the 25th of April on all aspects of lightweighting uh, research, including circular economy. And the member states participating are Spain, France, Sweden, Switzerland, uh, both parts of Belgium, Flanders and Wallonia. And what might be especially interesting for you is that we even have uh, partners outside Europe with an interesting industrial structure and supply industry and OEMs. These are Canada and uh, South Korea. So if you are interested in these transnational R&D projects funding, I will be ready in the, in the break. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for this uh, um, hint <laughs> on additional funding sources. But there were other questions in the audience. David. Um, yeah. Is it working? Okay, so I'd like to get back actually to the point that um, my esteemed friend Pietro Perlo made <laughs> earlier uh, about uh, whether it's wise to follow Tesla in terms of making vehicles of stainless steel bodies with battery packs that weigh hundreds of kilograms and basically really expensive high performance vehicles that you know, cost a lot you know whether that's the model that we want to follow in in Europe whether we don't risk uh, leaving a, a gaping hole in the market for uh, cheaper lighter less expensive vehicles that you know entry level electric vehicles um so yeah that's a little bit the question you know where where are we going in terms of weight reduction because we see small changes in terms of i don't know al aluminium knuckles that are reducing the weight by a few kilos and at the same time electric vehicles are now weighing two and a half tons if you count the battery pack and everything so uh, i just wondered a little bit how we are going to uh, in some way find a solution uh, and make sure that the market is well covered uh, by european manufacturers rather than allowing a hole for uh, an opportunity let's say for players from other countries uh, other regions around the world I think this is a challenge already addressed by Pietro, but it would be really indeed interesting to hear your opinion, it also linking to the additional challenges you see for lightweighting in the future. Who wants to answer? Well, uh, 
I'm, I'm a CFD guy, yeah? I'm a trader of um, lightweight and so on, but the, the thing is, if we go to 2-0, in the end, we, we need to, <laughs> to improve the efficiency uh, wherever we can. So um, I, I don't know which will be the milestones exactly, but uh, will be, I think, kind of uh, forced the, to be a step by step um, improving it. But well, this is a very generic answer. Eh? Maybe my colleagues can answer more concretely. That, that's in the uh, the lady. For us. Emma Briac uh, from uh, Green Innovation. Whatever we think about Tesla, Tesla is a good car, that's for sure. But lightweight is range. Whatever, we can put more battery or put lightweight. If we have more money and we can go for big, bigger battery and bigger, uh, best chemistry and we can also add some wrench by adding lightweight. This is my, my thinking. Uh, but, but is it real? It's a question of cost. It's a question, I, asked, uh, I already put a question. Uh, it's a question of cost. And the cost, when we calculate it for lightweighting, is based for what we earn in terms for EVs in terms of range. If the balance is good, so light weighting is good. If not, we go for more batteries. Uh, I would like to challenge this a little bit. It's not always about cost. It's also on environmental impact and yes. uh, resource sovereignty and so on. Uh, so yes, the uh, we, uh, cannot, uh, we cannot avoid the physics. The more mass we are driving, the more electricity we need. It is also when we, we calculate uh, the cost, we, the cost is not only batteries, but also the over environmental impact. Yeah. It's an overall, you can check it with OEMs. When they calculate the cost, it's not only uh, the impact on CO2 or uh, for thermal cars or range, but also it's an of, uh, it's, uh, overall calculation, yeah. taking into account LCA as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the recycli recyclability. So whatever we, we think about Tesla, Tesla is a good car, that's for sure, but we can also work light weighting for vehicle because of the environment, I mean, environmental impact, impact and because of less batteries and less impact on environment because batteries is an impact, negative impact on environment, uh, in environment. Yeah. Uh, Pietro, you can have the, the voice if you uh, keep short. The first meeting will be very short. The, the last two hours I will compensate. Yeah. Them. <laughs> so you, you raised a very nice point regarding a, a circular economy. Yeah. And that's indeed the first thing that people should start. Okay. For every ton of rock, you can extract up to 60% 60, 60, uh, 60 of steel. For every ton of rock, you can extract at the best. 30% of uh, aluminum. For every uh, ton of rock, you can extract one gram of gold. So please don't develop cars on gold uh, from, an, from an environmental point, point of view. Okay? But that is the first point. Steel is the most recyclable, the most abundant metal on the earth. Clear? I really invite you to listen a very nice presentation from a, fr a French woman uh, working on mining, uh, Aurore St Stefan. Okay. She, ma she is making fantastic presentation on mining uh, on, on metals. And there will be a revision of the presentation the day before tomorrow. Okay. So really worthwhile to look. First, but uh, still, is also the material that can be used to make everything lighter. Make it in aluminum, I will make it in steel lighter. Okay? Make it in aluminum, I will make it on steel 
more robust. That's the point. I am paid by the largest company on steel, and I am also paid by the largest <laughs> companies on aluminum. But I am a super. But but but, but, okay. but still is steel still has is, still is the material for future. <laughs> still has uh, and still also cost. Yeah. But the body and white is not the only part. Uh, I don't want to sit in a seat with steel. Uh, uh, it's not comfortable. Uh, steel is still the highest share in, of uh, the material in the car. So the, definitely this will continue, but this is not uh, exclude that we have to uh, follow light weighting just to, to save energy and to become more efficient and basically also then in terms of circular economy to keep the resources within Europe. But there was another question. Yeah, this one. Carlos Almeidec from Picosa. Uh, what of the conclusions of what you've shown are applicable to copper or any other conductive parts? Because all it's about structural parts, but there's another chunk of the weight and especially of the cost related with, with conductive parts. <laughs> That's a good question. Someone covered this. <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, but it, this is not the focus of this topic because yeah. this topic, this topic uh, where Flamingo yeah. Revolution Alma is working is about the body structure, is about the body in white. So uh, we are not focused on on the material you are mentioning. Mm. Yeah. Can you describe anything? <laughs> can you? I mean, but. Even though I know I'm talking about next steps of this research, can you extract or advance anything related with these parts? Thank uh, you. Are there, there are other projects ongoing and there's uh, in other areas like in the electronic part where you, you look also in, in copper and also in the recycling of the e-machine. There are possibilities. If you look into electronics, there are technologies and startups which can extract all the metals you, you, you would like to have at a high, very high purity. So there are technologies around. But we are coming to an end. We, we are scheduled until quarter past 12. Uh, so maybe we have one more question. Uh, trying to find a compromise. So, <laughs> so we, we have the, the monomaterial approach and the multimaterial approach. So, uh, but I will come back on the, on the idea of, of, uh, of uh, Raquel, uh, I guess, to reduce uh, the number of alloys. So in, in future, what we have done, we have produced a lot of different, of thousand different materials, high strains, plastics, uh, aluminium, casting alloys, uh, with, with, a, with a goal of, of light weighting. And now we, perhaps we are able to get not total back, but one step back and have perhaps some very specific and harmonized materials. Do you think that that would be approach, uh, an approach in future, uh, not to have thousand different uh, of, of uh, recipes uh, of different materials, but to have to harmonize in, in some case uh, the, the alloys, the, the recipes, in, in order to have a better recycling at the end. Uh, I've given the example of a uh, single material composite. Uh, I think it's a good application. and. Um, the, the academia and industry should further focus on it. Uh, it's easy to recycle and, and uh, even though fibers and polymer matrices are there in the composite, it's basically the same material. Uh, yeah, it's an example that I can give. I think it's also a question of competition and the business models of the material providers, right? And it's also then the demand of the uh, end users, what they they need. I, I'm not sure if we can harmonize on a big scale the different alloys, but it would be an interesting topic to discuss further. Um, it's a pity that we only have uh, uh, no minutes. No, actually we have no minutes left. It's quarter past. <laughs> so everyone is starving, at least I'm starving. Uh, I hope that you continue um, the discussion during lunchtime. I would like to thank the presenters for the interesting talks. And there were indeed 
quite, uh, let's say, um, encouraging what you achieved. And as you see from the discussion, it is also steering quite a lot of discussion. And I hope that we will be able to continue this discussion during the conference and also then later on. Thanks again for the presentation. Enjoy the lunch and have a nice afternoon.